My friends, Soul Tribe reading time. I haven't been here in two days for Soul Tribe reading because I wasn't feeling well. And I think I was telling you guys a few days ago that I've learned that if I'm not feeling well, that's the time to rest. Um, I was taught, you know, to always push myself and to like never admit weakness <laughs> and things like that, it's like silly things like that. Um, but recently I've been really trying to listen to my body. So I wasn't feeling very well, so I took the last two days to kind of, I did a few readings, but I kind of just took them to rest and recuperate, and I'm feeling better today. Um, you're my last reading of the day, so I am kind of losing it a little in the health department, like my nose has started to run again. Um, you know, another indication that I need to go rest now, <laughs> but I really wanted to come on and do a Soul Tribe reading and read that chapter from the book. So it is quite a long chapter, and you guys know how I struggle with reading. So I'm only going to get a couple of cards um, for the beginning of the Soul Tribe reading, but I'm glad you guys are here. I hope you're doing well. Um, I've, I'm experiencing like little... Like I'm experiencing some things that are out of my control right now. Like we're having um, some things leaking in our house. And we can't really control getting a plumber to come look at it because we're going through insurance. And so I'm trying to really release control about that. Like there's nothing I can do about it, but it's been stressful, you know, because we have our <clears throat> soul tribe reading. I wouldn't be me if I wasn't talking to you about pointless things. <laughs> um, but we've had to have our water turned off like most of the time. And then whenever we turn it on, it starts leaking in one of our bathrooms. So just like, there's this fly. I've been, you know, trying to surrender control. Like there's nothing I can do about that situation. There's nothing I can do except be patient and wait for things to happen. Wait for the insurance company to get their act together. So I've been trying to control the things I can control. The serenity prayer. Um, grant me the things to accept the things. Grant me the serenity to accept and the courage. <laughs> The serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So I can't help my leaky bathroom, but if my nose is running, I know that's a huge sign that my body needs rest. I don't know if you guys knew that. I saw that recently that if your nose is running, it's an indication that you need rest. Um, anyway, so the deck I chose... It's interesting, all of a sudden I'm having second thoughts about the deck I chose. Um, there's a reason I went over with such confidence and chose the deck though. I chose the inner child deck that I have. Look, my nose is running, I need rest, I need rest. <laughs> Hang on. All right, so <clears throat> I did choose the inner child oracle guidebook which we've used a bunch of times around here so it'll be interesting to see what comes out um it's time to celebrate so maybe there's something that you're about to be celebrating or something that you should be celebrating maybe it's time to celebrate the little things in life um interesting we have let love guide you choose to see the good in the world today that's beautiful Something possibly about celebrating the small things, like I said. <clears throat> Disappointment is not the end. I'm not going to read any of these cards. I want to see what spirit wants to actually get out for us today. And we have let go. Let go of everything that no longer serves you. So lots of energy coming up in here about seeing the beauty in things, letting let love guide you, releasing what no longer serves you, what no longer wants to be there, that kind of thing. Um, let's cut the deck and see what we get. Say yes. Now is the time to be open and receive. Interesting. Um, and remember we had that celebration card, so it feels like you're about to experience some sort of opportunity, maybe someone asking you something, maybe someone offering you something. Um... Maybe this is about, we were talking about finding the beauty in everything, celebrating the small things. Um, that could have to do with, I'm hearing gratefulness, because when you're someone who practices gratitude, 
it makes you a magnet for more abundance. So it could be that the universe is say, telling you to say yes to opportunities that come your way. The more you say yes, the more opportunities that will come. I'm not talking about saying yes to things you don't want to do. Um, but yeah, I'm being called to read this one. Say yes, 30. Be truly open. Being truly open to life can be a bit unnerving. There are so many possibilities in the unknowns and we could never analyze them all. While there is much wisdom in weighing the options before us, sometimes there will be aspects of the future that we can never truly know until we walk that road. It is in these moments that we have to take a leap of faith and say yes. If you have pulled this card, now might be the time to open up and receive. If we are not open to the many good things in life, they can pass us by. Practice saying yes to what you know will help you grow. There is abundance all around us. Sometimes we just need to make space for it to arrive. How does it feel in your body when you say yes to something new? How does it feel not knowing the outcome when you say yes? If it is a negative feeling, what is something you might be able to do to feel more positive about the unknown? That was it. So let's see what wants to come out for you. I don't know. It's just gotten very dark and gloomy here all of a sudden. It's never truly the end. Interesting. Beloved in this, everything will be okay. So whatever's happening for you, you know, spirits coming through saying there will be more opportunities for you, that it never truly is the end, that you'll have another chance to say yes. It's really interesting because when I was reading that say yes card, I kept seeing the number 19, but I don't know why, um, because the page number was like 75 or something like, but I kept seeing in my mind's eye 19 and now 19 is coming out here. So that's a cool synchronicity. I saw a cardinal yesterday. <laughs> I, don't, I think everything's magical. <laughs> I do. I think everything, I think there's magic everywhere. Endings are an inevitable part of the rhythm of life. They are bittersweet in nature and can seem to come at the least opportune moments. Though it is often true that when one door closes, another opens, this might not always be what we would wish for at the time. And it doesn't always bring us the comfort we desire. Many times the door, the open doors that endings create can bring about conflicting emotions within. If you have pulled this card, allow yourself to feel whatever you feel about this current ending in your life. Take the time you need to process the emotions you have and remember there is no need to feel shame. It is okay to be excited or sad. It is okay to feel mad or afraid. It is okay to be happy. It is okay to exist as you are right now in these moments. Take heart that in every ending, no matter how it may feel now, there is hope. Know that, know that there is something glorious waiting for you along this new path. What can you do today to honor the current ending in your life? Let's get another one. <clears throat> so you could have experienced some type of ending in your life, some sort of door closing. You know the way. Trust your intuition on this journey. 44. Beautiful. 44. 44. In this life, let me get this. In this life, there will be many voices telling you the right way to go. They can be confusing and sometimes contradictory, pointing out all of the intersecting paths that you could take. Just know that this is that this life is yours and yours alone. No one else can tell you the path that is yours to walk, for only you know the way. If you have pulled this card, then please know you are headed in the right direction. This card can also mean that you might need to listen to your inner voice now regarding a future decision. Take some time to reflect on the voices that you might have been listening to. Is there one that is drowning out your own? So that could be, you know, 
a negative thought pattern you have. That could be someone else's voice from your childhood. That could be a past partner's voice in your head. That could be the actual opinions of others. It could be your fear, your ego. Remember, your intuition whispers, your ego screams and yells and makes a big fuss and a big stink and wants your attention, um, if that makes any sense. Set aside some time today to connect with your inner voice and intuition. There are many different ways in which you can do this, and each person will be unique in how they receive their inner guidance. Go somewhere with minimal distractions and begin to reflect upon, upon the question, decision, or choice that is before you. Notice how your body feels when you think about each option. Is it tense or relaxed? What do you feel when you think about each option? If you can, close your eyes and imagine each scenario playing out in your life. Which possible outcomes do you prefer? Think about what it is that you want for your life right now, but also for the future. As you go through these exercises, look at what gives you a feeling of peace. Peace is what will help guide you. How does it feel to listen to your deep inner knowing? Do you feel a sense of empowerment when you trust yourself and your intuition? And that's the last card in the deck. That's beautiful. You know the way. You're on the right path. Let's get one more and then we'll read the book. Because like I said, well, okay then. Like I said, um, that chapter is long, I believe. Choose yourself today. Do not deny your importance beautiful. You are important. 32, set boundaries, claim your power and know your value today. So you have two cards about knowing your importance, knowing your value. So let's see what this is about. Set boundaries. So you may need, be needing to set boundaries with another person. There are two people in this image. So whoever that is for you, maybe even with yourself. Setting boundaries can often be an awkward and uncomfortable thing to do. No is a powerful word, one that many of us have, have been taught to shy away from. We may feel as though it is our responsibility to create happiness or pleasure for others by saying yes. It's interesting because we had say yes, and we also have this energy of say no. So saying yes to what, you know lights you up inside saying yes to the things that you intuitively feel like saying yes to but also having the power to say no um my dog is coughing downstairs oh my goodness we're all falling apart <laughs> i'm just kidding we're not falling falling apart but my dogs were in like a doggy daycare while I went away. So they came back with the dog version. It's I think it's called kennel cough, the dog version of a cold. Anyway, um, it can be helpful to understand what drains you, depletes you, or makes you feel used, particularly after you said yes to something. Write down these answers and practice using the word no around that which make you feel used, that what which makes you feel used. We say yes for a variety of reasons. A sense of worth can be one. But beloved, know that your value is immeasurable and you deserve the right to say no. Saying no can be an act of self-care. How to set boundaries can depend on the situation. Sometimes you will need to be firm in setting boundaries and sometimes setting them in a gentle way might be best. Saying no does not have to come from a place of anger. But it is okay if it does. Anger can be an indicator that we have been betrayed or harmed in some way. And it can also be the catalyst for setting boundaries, which if you watch my love reading tarots, I talk about like the Queen of Swords and about how sometimes um, that's the way that people, it's like, it's like your higher self comes to stand up for you and defend you and say, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And it can come from a place of anger, um, but it can also be the catalyst for setting boundaries. Anyway, how does, it, how does it feel in your body when you set boundaries? How does your inner child feel when you say no? If saying no brings up any fears of being rejected, know that by placing boundaries, you are choosing yourself. We reject ourselves when we say yes to something that might be harmful to our overall, overall well-being. Oh my goodness. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember, but like two months ago, I was sitting here crying 
because it took me like three days to say no to something I really didn't want to do. I was like intuitively, I knew that I shouldn't be doing it. Um, <clears throat> it didn't align with me and it was such a hard lesson for me to say no. Um, it was so difficult for me to say no. Anyway, interesting. So let's read this chapter. I lost the bookmark. It's just this really, really long chapter here. <laughs> How can I miss it? 16 ways emotionally intelligent people interpret negative feelings differently. So we're going to read this one. All right. It's on page 87, if that's symbolic to anyone. At the heart of discomfort is the potential for great wisdom. Every time we find ourselves feeling jealous, angry, regretful, resentful, self-hating, judgmental, closed-minded, and hopeless, we are also being handed the opportunity to transform our mindsets and change our lives. These emotions are not punishments. They're signals of the shifts that need to take place to support the lives we deeply desire to create. Here are 16 of the most important ones. What I envy in others is showing me what I desire for myself. Envy is a revealing emotion. It masks itself as anger or frustration when in reality it is a deeply buried treasure. What we envy in others is actually a cue for us to become clearer about what we want to create for ourselves. We aren't actually trying to say they don't deserve that, but rather I want to feel like I deserve that too. Jealousy reveals our own self-suppression. When you see someone else acti actively or seemingly effortlessly giving themselves permission to pursue something, your response is to project your own feelings of inadequacy on them. If you can't do it, why should they? Instead of letting envy turn you into the pettiest version of yourself, you can understand that within this thing you envy, is a truth about what you should be working towards, not what you should be criticizing someone else for having. The next one, my feelings are messengers, but I don't have to act on every one of them. The funny thing is, the funny thing about feelings is that our quest to validate them, which is the only way to release them, it can often seem like we are making them the funny thing about feelings is that in our quest to validate them, which is the only way to release them, it can often seem like we are making them more real. Not everything we feel is reflective of reality or the way things actually are. You've probably had the experience of thinking someone was the one when they weren't, or that you weren't good enough when you certainly were, and so on and so forth. Instead of responding to our emotions impulsively, we can observe them and then question them. Is this helpful? Is this truthful? Is this coming from a place of clear perspective or a lingering past wound? Trace it back to its origin and then extract the lesson that's waiting for you. You'll know you've done this successfully when you emerge with a newer inner narrative that's wiser, more accurate, and that makes you feel more at ease. The next one, what I wish I had done yesterday is showing me what I need to do today. I'll let you in on a dirty little secret. There are thousands of things you regret in your past that you don't have conscious knowledge of. The reason why they remain in the recesses of your mind is that they are, they are ultimately unhelpful to your present or your future. The things that you actively and persistently regret are actually signaling, signaling you not towards what you wish you had done in the past, but towards what you want to and need to create going forward. Instead of thinking back on all you wish you did, devise another way to have that experience now or in the years to come. There's never just one opportunity to do something important in life. There's just one opportunity to do it in that specific way, but ultimately, there are pro probably dozens of roads towards your destination. You just have to choose not to stop the journey just because one was a dead end. The next one, I probably see myself more negatively than anyone else. Not even your worst critics are judging you as much as you are judging yourself. Truth. They're, they're still watching a highlight reel while you're reviewing all the behind the scenes footage. 
Nobody else has access to all of the knowledge that you have about yourself, so there's no possible way that they could perceive you as negatively as you see yourself. Beyond that, most people think of others positively or at least neutrally until they're given a reason not to. This means that most people either think of you pretty well in an indifferent manner or not at all. All of those intense and relentless self-criticism criticisms are just about that, self-criticism. Nobody is sitting around thinking about that embarrassing thing you did five years ago except yourself. Isn't that the truth? Or how much progress you are or aren't making in life. They're sitting around and thinking about themselves. The next one. I just say the next one so you guys know we're moving on to a different one. Other people most likely think I'm doing better than I think I am. In a similar way, other people are far more likely to value your accomplishments and attributes, whereas you focus more on your shortcomings and failures. This should help you realize that you don't have anything to prove to anyone else. Success is a self-evident thing. When you approach other people imagining that they at least have a relatively positive view of you, it changes the way you act around them. Instead of acting on the defense, you can connect, knowing that they are probably already thinking you are worthy because you are. The next one. (laughs) If I accomplish just one thing today, that is enough. You don't desire to be constantly productive because the world is telling you to be. You desire to be constantly productive because you're afraid of lack. You're afraid of failing. You're afraid of instability. You're afraid of falling behind. While the world has certainly instilled a culture and social structure that makes these fears more common, it's important that we, re- we redirect the blame here and put the, o- the onus, is that what that is? No, back on ourselves. If we never confront our scary feelings of self-doubt, we're going to push ourselves to overwork and overcompensate until we die, which is all I used to do was overwork and overcompensate. <clears throat> We can change the narrative by approaching productivity in a more realistic way. Some days you'll get it all done. Some days you'll need to rest. <laughs> Some days you just getting one thing checked off the list is reason enough to feel proud of yourself. Instead of trying to feel less guilt as a rebellious rebellion uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Instead of trying to feel less guilt as a rebellion against a world that you think is out to get you, see it as a recalibrating of your mindset to something more rational. Small steps taken almost daily move you closer towards stability and success. You don't need to do it all in order to be safe. And we've talked about baby steps and about how if you take one small baby step every day, instead of like saying, I'm going to take 25 baby steps today and 50 tomorrow, um, one small baby step every day will result in a hell of a lot of growth in one year. The next one, I am allowed to express and process deep emotions. Some days life will knock you off your feet. The problem is that instead of embracing heavy waves of emotion, we resist them and end up with an intense backup that makes us constantly tense and constantly on edge. The way we remedy this is by shifting the way we approach our feelings in the present moment. Doing this does not mean you are falling behind. It does not mean you are a lesser being. It does not mean that you are backtracking. It does not mean that you are self-sabotaging. It just means you're processing, and that's a good thing. When we don't allow ourselves to have these very vulnerable, very human moments, it turns us into hypersensitive robots constantly trying to control our lives and the lives of those around us out of the fear that any trigger might unleash the avalanche. We can better assimilate ourselves to emotional health by allowing ourselves to lay down, cry it out, vent, and embrace the low tides when they come, knowing the dawn will always rise. The next one. I am entitled to my own idea of myself. You are allowed to invent an image of yourself separate from the pieces you put together of what other people have told you about yourself. That's how you create your self-esteem as a child, but as an adult, you have to grow out of it. Instead of just accepting that you're the sum of how others see you, 
you are free to create a self-perception that is more accurate to your honest ex- to your honest experience of yourself. A truly healthy self-image includes good and bad as all people have and is built outside of how you imagine other people see you. The next one. I can define what success will look like in my own life. You build your concept concept of success by picking up on micro cues from the people around you. What you've heard them say is and isn't acceptable in life. You build your idea of success around the ultimate vision of what would make you most loved. That is until you realize it's a fruitless endeavor. Eventually you reach the peak of that particular mountain only to find that you've fulfilled someone else's vision while you yourself feel empty inside. It's no place to be, and yet somewhere we all must usually arrive before we know how to redirect. You were... That was weird. I hope that recorded the whole thing. It just did this weird glitch thing. You are allowed to define success on your own terms. You are allowed to say what is or isn't enough for your life. One way that you can help yourself do this more easily is to stop deciding what success is or isn't for someone else and wish them well on their own journey, knowing that a great life looks different for us all. The next one, my purpose might not be my job and it doesn't have to be. Your job pays the bills. Your purpose gives meaning to your life. No one person has any single purpose. Our purpose can change day to day, hour to hour. Our purpose may be found in a relationship or our presence or a job we do for a while and then another one we do later on. Our purpose is to just be alive. Everything else that follows is likewise important, but if you get too caught up in the idea that you have to defo- that you have to find your divine purpose within a profession, you seriously limit yourself and your understanding of true and per- pervasive meaning. You also attach your worth to something temporary when your purpose is an infinite expression of your own nature. Instead of trying to figure out what you're supposed to do for the rest of your existence, figure out what the next right step is in your life right now, because that's probably the way forward. The next one. Nobody is required to live up to my expectations of them. Resentment is often bred from unfulfilled and unfair expectations. Absolutely nobody is required to live up to the ideas of who we think they should or shouldn't be or what they should or shouldn't do in the same way that we are not required to live up to those ideas they have about us. This is where boundaries come in. While we cannot control who or what someone becomes, we can control our interactions with them, and we must. Because when we assume that everyone is required to be who we think they should be, we place limitations on them, and we ultimately just make ourselves frustrated and resentful. <clears throat> we can either embrace people for who they are in this uh, who they are in this movement or decide to limit the presence they have in our lives. And I'm just gonna go to the next part because I know it's gonna cut me off. The next one, it is safe to let go of the past experiences once I've extracted the lessons from them. I love this. Um, This is something that I talk about therapy a lot, but this is something I did in therapy. Like once the baggage is unpacked, once you've ruminated about it and you've learned the lesson and you've reflected on it, release it. Um, You don't have to keep ruminating. You don't have to keep reviewing the details of old experiences. You don't have to keep worrying that you'll get caught off guard again. When we can't let go of the past, it's often because it doesn't feel safe to. Without hypervigilance, we assume the threat will be free to come up and surprise us again. The experiences we can't release often still hold within them a lesson that is yet to be extracted. Once we've learned from the mistake and carry that wisdom with us each day, We are finally free to release what brought it to us. When we haven't learned the lesson, it doesn't feel safe to release the teacher. The next one. Right now, my mission is to make the very best of what is in front of me. Instead of constantly thinking about where you should or shouldn't be, or who does or doesn't have more or less than you, 
or how you measure up to your friends or family or past selves, you can instead think of the only task any one of us truly have, which is simply to make the best of what's in front of us. That's it. Make the best of this day. Make the best of the opportunities you have. Make the best of your current relationships. Make the best of yourself right here, right now. The best doesn't mean the most perfect. It just means that instead of passively letting life happen to you, you show up in each moment and you work with what you have instead of just complaining about what you don't. Hang on. All right, where were we? Yes, I already read that. Okay, I think we're on this one. My most persistent, I'm sorry if I'm repeating something. Um, I just got, I have a really hard time focusing and there was a lot of external noise happening in my house and like, it's almost like all of my thoughts, all of my words just poof when there's a distraction. Um, anyway, so I just needed to ground myself for a second and then I couldn't remember where we had left off. I think we're here. My most persistent judgments of people are often a reflection of a block within myself. Truth. What you dislike about other people can reveal a lot about your own psyche. Most importantly, though, your ongoing relationship relational relational issues are often pointing towards emotional blocks within yourself the very blocks that are holding you back from the life you're asking for which is why they're in your conscious awareness hang on oh my gosh again i have no idea where we were most importantly, your ongoing relational issues are often pointing towards emotional blocks within yourself, the very blocks that are holding you back from the life you're asking about, which I know I already read this, which is why they're in your conscious awareness. If you don't acknowledge someone else's progress, you can't acknowledge your own. If you villainize someone else's success, you resist your own. If you sum someone up by their worst traits, you sum yourself up by your own. And what you will almost always come to find is that the moments at which you feel the most compelled to judge and shrink other people from your life is the very moment at which you yourself feel pretty small. Instead of projecting, seek deep, deeper wisdom, heal your relationship with yourself and the rest will fall into place. The next one, I do not need to feel guilty over what I cannot control. Oh my gosh. There is no sense holding on to what you can no longer change. You don't have to feel guilty for the sake of it. Guilting yourself doesn't make you a better person. It makes you a bitter person, which inevitably results in less than admirable behavior. Instead of trying to bully yourself into a better character, seek a deeper understanding of why you acted in the way you did and what blind spots led you there. Understanding the root of the behavior more completely will not only ensure that you can change your actions going forward, but it will give you a greater sense of peace because you're trusting in your wisdom, not your impulses. The next one. I am more powerful than I think I am. When you realize that your words, your actions, and your beliefs dimply, dimply, deeply impact not only your reality, but the realities of those around you, you start taking yourself a lot more seriously. You start to realize that you do have the power to change your life, to create what you desire, to experience another reality. Instead of trying to move the unmovable unmove or change the unchangeable, you recognize that you can control a number of things that are right in front of you. And then over time, you will begin, you will be able to shift more and more. And this is the last one. <clears throat> I have to say we're one third of the way through this book. So again, thank you for reading it with me because I probably wouldn't be able to read it by myself. My highest potential, you know what? Who's stopping me though? Only me and my own opinion. I, I could read it by myself if I really put my mind to it. Right? Right? <laughs> my highest potential future life already exists. I love that one. When you close your eyes and imagine your future self or future life, the one that feels so good, so right, so inspiring, so hopeful. What you need to know is that it already exists. That person is you. That life is yours. The journey is bridging the gap between visualizing it and seeing it in reality. 
That journey contains releasing attachments, changing behaviors, shifting your belief system, and slowly taking action every day until you reach the other side. You are destined for what you most desire. The truth that pulls you deeply, the truth that pulls you deeply, do so for the truths. There we go. The truths that pull you deeply do so for a reason. You were inching closer towards the life that was always meant to be yours, but the first step in enacting it is completely knowing that it's already there. It's yours for the taking. And that's the end of that chapter. So the next chapter is when you're ready to take your power back, begin here. Um, so interesting. So I feel like I'm going to leave it here today, my friends, unless... What are these? What cards are these? Let's get a few number cards. Let's get a few number cards to round this reading out. I don't know why. 2112, it's up to you. Someone is watching over you. Good fortune, direction. Even if it seems like you're not making any meaningful progress, things are moving in the right direction. If you see this number, it's a sign that everything will work out in your favor and that your dreams will come true. 2112. We have 444 protection, change, rebellion, guidance, justice, truth, character, love. I'm just going to take these ones. So 444, 333, 2424, 2112. Get ready for good things, the good things you've been hoping for. You were born for a higher calling. Put your energy into going towards your ambitions and the universe will align itself to provide you with the right people, circumstances, and resources to make things happen. You are worthy of affection, leisure, and pleasure. If you tell your family and friends how you feel, you'll find that you're all on the same page and can work together effectively. Many people are rooting for you. If you spread love, it will find its way back to you multiplied. And support. Seeing the angel number 333 is a sign that it's time to focus inward. Work on your skills, discover your talents, use your imagination, unleash your inner artist. Doing so will boost your self-esteem and sense of competence. It does wonders for your sense of purpose and contributes to your community. So I'm going to leave it there, my friends. I'm sending you lots of love and light. I hope you're having a really good weekend. I'm going to I'm going to plan to be here tomorrow. But if I'm not, it's because I'm resting. <laughs> anyway, I'm sending you guys lots of love and light, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.